During a 90-minute secret recording released by Lev Parnas' legal team, Donald Trump admits that he was afraid of Hillary Clinton picking Bernie Sanders as her vice president. Now, obviously, she didn't pick Bernie Sanders, but as you're going to see here, this is another perfect example of why Bernie Sanders is the most electable candidate against Donald Trump in 2020. Listen. Bernie Sanders, you thought about it. They, they rigged it. Bernie, Bernie would have beat Hillary in the right now. That would have been tough. Yeah, because there was, I agree. Because there was no hatred. Right, you're right. There right. was no hatred. Millennials, right. millennials were right. Hey, but she, but she, as great as he was, half my motivation in working was hey, not let her do it. 100%. Right. Yeah. And that, and that's why I think a big Bernie part of our vice president would have been tougher. Oh, yeah, yeah. She her, her, yeah, yeah Cain was what yeah. I couldn't But I think that Bernie, you know, because all those people that hated her so much who mm -hmm. voted for me. You know, I got 20% of Bernie vote. People don't rule us up because of trade. Because he's a big trade guy. You know, he basically says we're getting screwed on trade. <coughs> and he's right. I'm worse than he is. But if we can do something about it, I don't know if he could have. But um, had she picked Bernie Sanders, it would have been tougher. Mm -hmm. It was the only one I didn't want her to pick. So there you go. I think this speaks for itself. And uh, there is existing reporting to back this up, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But first, to get all the facts out there, this was during a 2018 dinner, again released by Lev Parnas's legal team, Lev Parnas being an associate of Rudy Giuliani. Um, and during these recordings, it also implicates Trump in crimes. So, like, in case there's any, you know, idea out there, oh, Trump is doing this on purpose to uh, make people think that he wants to go, go up against Bernie Sanders. No. <laughs> these are recordings from 2018. Um, Trump, before, even, uh, before he even knew that Bernie was running uh, for president in uh, 2020, discussing his thoughts on the 2016 election. Now, as I was saying, this is not at all surprising, given the, uh, given the existing reporting uh, about this. So last year, uh, in September, the Daily Beast reported that Trump privately tells confidants that socialism won't be so easy to beat in 2020. Uh, going on to say, this year, Trump has repeatedly told friends and donors that running against socialism in a general election may not be so easy because of its populist draw, according to four Republicans and sources close to Trump who've heard him say this over the past several months. According to a person who was in the room, Trump told donors at a recent private event that though a lot of people think it'll be easy to beat in 2020, the truth is it might not be so easy. The president, according to the source, said that you can have someone who loves Trump, but many people love free stuff too. He added that if candidates tell Americans, especially young voters, that they're going to cancel their debt, that's a tough one to run against. And there's also reporting from this year that adds to this. The Daily Beast again, this was from uh, the 15th of January. Trump privately obsessed with Bernie Sanders' popularity and socialism's appeal. Uh, in the past two months, the president has repeatedly asked advisors in and out of the White House about how Sanders polls or would likely perform in critical battleground states, specifically Pennsylvania, according to two people who've independently heard him ask about this. At times, Trump has asked about Sanders' prospects, even in the absence of a current public or internal poll on the matter. And it's not surprising, because when you look at head-to-head -head matchups, Bernie is often the one that leads Trump above and beyond anybody else in the Democratic primary race. As Newsweek reported recently, Bernie Sanders leads Donald Trump by widest margin of all 2020 candidates, election poll. The poll found that 52% of voters would choose Sanders and only 43% Trump, giving the veteran senator a nine-point lead. Next was former Vice President Joe Biden at 50% to Trump's 43%, a seven-point lead. Michael Bloomberg, the media and financial data billionaire, also led Trump by seven points at 49% to 42%. Uh, Elizabeth Warren leads Trump by 48 to 45. Uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, is ahead of Trump by three points at 47 to 44. Uh, Andrew Yang is ahead of Trump by two points at 46 to 44. And Tom Steyer is tied with Trump at 44% uh, apiece. And Amy Klobuchar loses to Trump by two points at 43% to 45%. So, just to, to go off the last bit there, Amy Klobuchar, that completely bl blows a hole into the uh, Bill Maher idea of who's the most electable. Amy Klobuchar, the least electable out of anybody in the race.
But you see here Bernie with the widest margin. And this is what the polls normally are showing. That Bernie Sanders, I mean, I mean if, not even normally. This is what the polls are showing. If you go into head-to-head -head matchups, go to Real Clear Politics, you can see head-to-head -head matchups, Bernie versus Trump. In almost every single poll over the past four years, Bernie Sanders is defeating Donald Trump. And how many times, I mean, maybe you're new to my channel, but how many times have I said why? Bernie Sanders is able to bring out the people that did not come out in 2016. Young people, progressive independents, working class non-voters. These are the people that stayed home or in some cases even voted, but didn't vote for the top of the ticket. So this was the case, I believe, in, um, <clears throat> in Wisconsin, I believe, where um, a lot of voters voted down ballot, but then left the top, actually, Wisconsin and Michigan, voted down ballot for the Democrat, but then left the top between Hillary and Trump blank. So you would get those people. Bernie Sanders would get those people, but he would also get the people that didn't come out. Again, young people, progressive independents, working class non-voters. That is the Bernie base. Joe Biden, by trying to reach out to you know conservatives and, and moderates the way he's doing right now, just like Hillary Clinton did in 2016, it didn't work back then. Why is it going to work now? It's not. Joe Biden will bring out the exact same audience that Hillary Clinton got in 2016. So it's not worth taking that risk. You want to vote for somebody who's actually going to bring out more people to vote in 2020. Because the people that voted in 2016 against, against uh, Donald Trump are going to vote for the Democratic nominee in 2020 regardless because they want to vote against Trump. So you already have those voters locked down. The 2016 Democratic voters are already locked down. But you have to get more people. The young people especially. You have to have a candidate that excites them out to vote. Bernie Sanders does that. And I think it appears even Donald Trump is maybe aware of this.